I'm in Romans chapter 11. You know, we've tried to preach Romans chapter 11 for about two months now, I think. About maybe about that long. And I've not been able to. Just trying to. And then, of course, we had the missions trip. So, where we went to Zambia, these are more than just a missions trip. We call it missions for lack of a better expression. But they are more like being sent out to take the message of Jesus Christ to his people and to drive the point home. I, I, my overly used word, inculcate, embed. The, the Jesus and the knowledge of Jesus and who he is, what he's done into his people because honestly a lot of us don't really know. We, it's like Jesus is fine until the problem gets real bad. No, Jesus is, is amazing. And so that's what we do and we did that in, in Zambia. We did that in Pakistan and in Pakistan it was a different scenario uh, but we were there because God sent us. And somebody said to me, well, Pastor, yeah, you know, because if God sends you, he's going to bring you back. I said, no, that's not my, that's, that's not why I go. I don't go because God is going to bring me back. I go because he sent me. Amen. 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 Are you with me? And so I don't go because I got an insurance policy that says, oh, he'll bring you back. No, he may not. But I know I've obeyed. And as I've said, I, I will die in obedience. And this is what I want to convey to all of us, that let us live in obedience and let us die in obedience. And I want to say that to our wonderful audience, as we have someone, Sister Susan Liberto, our mission director, said, even from Sweden. And I want to thank you. We're going to come up there and see you one day in Sweden. And so l let me just say that I was looking at this, the, my scriptures today in Romans 11, and, and I'm hoping that, that I'll be able to do it in the next service, do it justice. But I was thinking all of this has to do with God not having forsaken or neglected his people Israel. Amen. You'll see what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, you got to act like you see what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm going to import some Pentecostals here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to import some. I'm going to go out and recruit them. How much you want an hour, you know? <laughs> I thought, God, you can't make it up. I mean, Israel was viciously attacked and murdered by a group called Hamas. And they viciously attacked men, women, and children. Men, women, and children cutting children's throats. Even if I love you, I can't stand with you in that. I have to stand on the truth. Yes. I want to show you how to do it. I want to demonstrate how to do it. And you do it by not thinking about yourself and not coming at things from your mental faculties. But I come from my knower. There's a little Catholic nun who used to call the heart your knower. She said, you got to know in your knower. And that's what I know in my knower, where I'm supposed to be. I don't wake up trying to figure out where I should stand. I go to bed knowing where I should stand, and I wake up the same. And in this story about God not neglecting his people, it looked bad for Israel. It's been looking bad for Israel since her birth. It's been looking bad. It's like God wanting to give you something that you don't seem to want. But for the sake of the fathers and the sake of his word, but for the sake of the fathers, he stands there. I want you to remember these things. In the first, I think, 10 verses, I, we talked about, has God cast away, thrown off his people? No. I want you to remember that in chapter 11. Then the election or, and or election of grace, which means that all of us, Jews and Gentiles, are saved by grace, through faith, back to grace. Amen. And so they are the beneficiaries of the election of grace. In other words, God chose them because he wanted them, not because of what they had done for him or what they were able to do for him. He just loved you and chose you. And that's why you and I are here today the same way they came. It's because God loves you and God chose you and God's taking care of you. That's what it is. 
And, and I want you to remember those first 10 verses that when he says, uh, e Elijah, Elijah, not Shah, but Elijah was uh, in a bad predicament. Jezebel was after him and he was scared of that girl. Man, mighty man of God scared of that girl. She was a bad girl. She was a bad, bad girl. He wasn't scared of 400 prophets of Baal, but he was scared of that bad girl. And he ran for his life, started crying, belly aching to God, saying, I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to get me. If they get me, Lord, it's over. And, and I want you to remember divine response. To every negative situation in your life, remember divine response. What did the divine response say? It says, I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have never bowed to Baal. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. And the thing that I'm going to say, I'll t talk about these more in the next verse. I'm not going to keep you. But also, Israel, the Bible says, they stumbled. He says, have they stumbled that they should fall or should they fall beyond recovery? And God says for Israel, God forbid, the Jews are not stumbling beyond recovery. You will never stumble beyond recovery. Because this, the blessing that he gave them, he has given to us as well. I, I would sometimes that I could just take some of us who are, are, are insistent on believing that you somehow are able to keep yourself. But I present myself daily to the one who is able to keep me from falling beyond recovery. And present me, you, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. It's not your joy, it's his joy. All right? I want us to know those things. And, and uh, we're going to live our lives not in some religious fashion, some religious fashion filled with religiosity. We do all these things, uh, go through all these gyrations to try to prove how holy and righteous we are. We're not going to live our lives like that. I'm, I'm inviting you on the, if I may just be bold to say, you know how when the first place winner wins and they put him on a little pedestal, and then the, the, the second and the third place, or, or the second loser and the third loser. <laughs> they're down there. I'm going to invite all of you up here with me and celebrate. I, I, want, I want to invite you up here to celebrate because of what Jesus has done, what Jesus continues to do. You and I are not capable of escaping his plan. I want to leave that with you, and I want to invite you to just celebrate with me the Lord Jesus. Let's just celebrate the Lord Jesus. Can we do it just for a moment? Come on, just celebrate the Lord Jesus. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm inviting you up on this top place to let us live from this moment forward. We want to please God. That's what we want to do. But this is what I want you to help me do. Let's not join Israel in her unbelief. Let's make them jealous. Let's make them jealous. Let them see you enjoying their riches. They were meant for them first. It was to the Jew first. I don't want you to join them and say, yeah, yeah. I want you to make them jealous. If you talk to anybody who's Jewish in the next several days, hours or days, I want you to tell them about the Savior you have found. I want you to tell them about your spiritual riches. And if you, if you really want to, you can talk a little bit about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
But if you talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, don't you forget Yeshua. Yeshua. In Jesus' name. I'll be back in a minute. We'll dismiss you. We'll dismiss you. But, but let me ask you a question. Perhaps there's somebody who is here, and uh, you said, Pastor, I came to give my heart to Jesus. I'll come back, and I'll invite you to come. We give ourselves to Jesus. He's the best, best one to give ourselves to. But we have what I call like a moment of sanity where God gives you understanding that you're all messed up no matter how well you've done in life, quote unquote. You're all messed up without Jesus and you're going to need him to step over. We're going to all step over and you're going to need him because you don't know where the ground is. You don't know how to walk on the water. So we're going to ask you to come and give your life to Jesus because that's what this life is about. Amen. I'll be back in a minute. Pastor.